The Stallions kick off the USFL season April 15th. Meanwhile, we'll be in Memphis on the 16th for one new team coming to the league. And Coach Flip might have given us a new hub location. This is the USFL podcast, and it starts right now. One, two, three. Oh! everybody to the latest edition of the usfl podcast zach common back in his chair after a week off i got to shout out jim renee later on in the show alongside with of course the man of the hour who hosted last week's show and brought you some thoughts on john d filippo it is the ref himself coming on on the opposite side of the screen i'm so glad to be back on here because man if I felt bad for missing last week's episode, I would have felt really garbage if I didn't get on for what this week has led up. November for the league has been bonkers, and November fifteenth will now live will now live in uh, quite high regard in terms of news. I mean, what a week! What a I mean, week, I mean, man! I this mean, is the intro. This is the intro. I'm trying to get you in, and I'm just I, I can't even stop bubbling over already. I mean, this was. One of the best weeks. If you're a spring football fan, either side of the aisle, yes. you're feeling pretty dang good this week. And as a USFL fan, boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Good stuff, too. What was once speculation is now confirmation. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about the speculation zone, baby. Because now we can look back. Where were we right? And where were we very, very, very wrong? And now we have a little bit more details on what season two is shaping up to look like. And I think you you kind of hinted at it here. This is the news that kind of got overshadowed this week. We have a kickoff date for season two, seemingly. We do. We have a kickoff date for season two, basically a weekend. We have two dates in particular. One of those dealing with, if you guys are jumping on the show, you know why, uh, that brand new hub and a team that will be joining into the league. We'll get into that later on later on or at least after we talk about the stallions news that started the week um but as you guys know we got to get some things out of the way we always got those little those little bits that we got to talk to you about first off look if you and especially for you people that are in the new hub that are coming in down south uh if you're tuning in for the first time hey welcome to the show we appreciate you tuning on in we saw several you'll follow us along on twitter by the way and for those that are on the fence follow us on twitter facebook and instagram at usfl podcast if you want to keep up with any episode releases or especially on twitter if you want to keep up with all our shenanigans on that platform uh also by the way if you're on here watching the YouTube version by by chance, or if you're listening on the podcast and you're saying, oh, they have a YouTube channel? Yes, we do. Go on over to YouTube. Or if you're on here now, click that subscribe button and click the bell, because as we always say on this show, it builds morale. Fans of the show, the regulars on here, they know. They already know. You folks out there, and I'm, not, I'm just going to say, all right, Memphis, you guys are now going to get that experience at least as much as possible in the offseason, and then once to twice a week. During the regular season. Well, and here's the thing. You know who really needs some morale right now? You brought up the Memphis Showboats, the new fans. Well, the Bandits fans. I know you need a little bit yeah, of morale. You, you're you sticking around because we'll talk about this a little bit later. It might not be the end of the road for the old Bandit ball. So stick with us. Stick around. Maybe you're a Showboats fan now. Or maybe you, you came to your senses and you're going all in with the gamblers, baby. Season two is our year. No, no, no. You're going with the Panthers, dude. You're going with the Panthers. (laughs) Oh, boy. It's a good week. It's such a good week. Final thing, by the way, and this is just because we love our partner here at Royal Retros, and you should check this out. Uh, Save 10% off when you go and check out Royal Retros at royalretros.com using code USFL podcast, by the way. So they have some awesome gear that's like, it's basically old meets new school stuff that you can find. You can find old school USFL logos of your showboats fans that like the old red and red, silver and black. Go and check that out. They have tons of stuff on there too. Um, But the folks over there, they run a great website, royalretros.com, for your apparel needs, especially for the, your all football apparel needs. And by the way, we have this final thing, official merchandise stuff, if and when, most likely when, by the way, it's going to happen, 5,000 subs 
we hit that number, you get a jersey of your choice, personalized. One lucky winner that is subscribed to this channel will get that. So do not miss out on that chance. That's why we say click that bell, builds around, and you also get to sit on a prize of your choice. Oh yeah. And so. and and you know what? Every so often we go live, especially once that season's coming. And if you hit that bell, not only are you getting the morale, not only are you entered to possibly win a fresh free jersey, but you're gonna know every time we go live. And I mean, who doesn't want to know that? I mean, even I want to know when we're live sometimes. And I'm there. <laughs> even I want to know when I'm live. <laughs> Wait a minute. But we're already on. What a, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, we, you, you, as I know, you have long weeks. I am just tired all the time. It, it's okay. <laughs> we, we both have mental lapses on, on, on how cognizant we are in the real world at, at days. And I'll be honest with you, as we get into this, um, the Monday news with the stallions, uh, reconfirmation that didn't make me lose sleep. Uh, the 15th though, I didn't sleep. Um, and I, again, full disclosure, if you know me on this show, I work nights now. Mm -hmm. Um, I need to go to bed and I was kind of like, I can't go to bed because things are happening every like 15 minutes and I have to, and I'm just going to be staying awake and talking about it. I might, my dad, I'm talking to him about the hub stuff and he's going, when do you go to bed? <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, it was what my body decides. It's, <laughs> it, I'm too, too high, too up on natural adrenaline right now. Um, you know, th this piece of news before it got into the, it got into Wednesday or but Tuesday that is. Um, Monday was pretty, you know, it was pretty, pretty solid stuff we got here and had to get some clarification. So kicking things off, the stallions are officially back in their hub in Birmingham, which I, I think a lot of us thought was oh, going, yeah. it was pretty much, we thought it was going to happen anyway, but there was some, of course, there's a little antsiness with a few, with one or two write-ups saying, well, they are kind of talking with the city again on renegotiating a deal or at least discussing a deal. And I'm like, Oh, they're going to be back. You don't oh, yeah. like That'd be a PR disaster if you pulled out of the of Birmingham Alabama after this se at season. So two things come with that, or three things come with that. First off, they are back. Second off, April 15th is the kickoff at the Birmingham Hub. Third thing, they are hosting the New Orleans Breakers. That that I, I messed it up reading that they were going to play week one. That is not the case. They are hosting the New Orleans Breakers as essentially they're they're kind of they're like a roommate. Mm -hmm. Think of it that way for 2023 and you can pre-register for season tickets right now something that's new this year by the way hasn't really been talked about this much mm -hmm. they're doing season tickets this time remember last year because it was one hub they really didn't do season tickets it was the ten dollar tickets you can pay up for more premium seats this year now that you see there's multiple hubs coming they want those home markets they're trying to emphasize that becoming a season ticket holder they're probably going to get you some perks i bet this is the early stages of that and you know the thing is too so we, we didn't know that this news was coming, but it felt like something was coming because I believe it was Friday of last week when a good friend of the show, Brett Tierce, uh, from mm -hmm. was it the XFL USFL fan Facebook group, he had posted that he got an invite to a Birmingham Stallions fan engagement meetup party, which I know that USFL fans have been begging for these things to happen. And I'm so glad that they kicked it off. So you got a chance to meet Skip Holtz. Coach Skip, man, sign you up. Yeah. Bo Scarborough, which I, to me essentially confirms that he'll be here in season two. But to me, the icing on top, the cherry on top of the icing even, you got a chance to get a, a up and close to that sweet USFL championship trophy. Beyond Beyond hearing this news earlier in the day that Birmingham is returning, yeah, you have less teams in the hub this time around, but you know what? You have probably your biggest rival from last year. Now we'll have to see, can the Breakers get a win over the Stallions this time? Because they couldn't do it out of three games last year. They have another chance now, and they're going to be up close and personal out of Birmingham. So all in all, you know what? Stallions fans are happy. They, I think everybody, like you mentioned, I think a lot of people expected that the USFL would be back in Birmingham next year. Mm -hmm. It was a matter of how many teams, right? And right. Well, their headquarters is in Birmingham, mm -hmm. so it just hearing anything that was long lines, well, they might pull out. I'm like, eh, that just seems a little. I would have been 
I would have been flabbergasted. Mm-hmm. And I don't use that word often, <laughs> but I would have definitely been flabbergasted and kind of like back in my seat, like dark, sitting in the dark going, huh, how did we get to this point? If uh, the USFL didn't somehow say, yeah, we, we have to be here because we already built a, we built something already last year. So yeah, it was, it was nice just to be like, Hey, pump the brakes. Nothing's going away. We're <laughs> we're here to stay in Birmingham, of course. And I mean, look, these fan engagement events, it's, it's been, it's no secret. It's been requested. People mm-hmm. have been talking about these on forums, pages, you name it. They want more local feel. Um, Brett definitely, when I've talked to him, same deal, you know, they've been, they want to emphasize that. And I think the league, this is the first step to many things. I think with the season ticket, again, if you're doing pre-registration for tickets now, and again, full five, you're going to do probably five home games. Cause keep in mind, mm. you know, as we're going to talk in a second, multiple hubs this season, um, they're going to be traveling there. This isn't going to be, this isn't going to be, they're stuck, stuck mm. in Birmingham. Maybe of course they have to play the breakers. Keep in mind. So I guess you get two, you get two extra home games, mm. but realistically you still have to go on the road at some point. So not all these games are going to be all home games for the stallions this season. Well, then, but here's the thing though, Zach, because you have the breakers there. Now I don't expect a full 10 week season out of Birmingham, but mm-hmm. you might get more than five games in, in, in that stadium, just from, let's say the stallions are away, but the breakers are playing, I mean, at home, if you will, <laughs> just at the, the host hub. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see well, how sure. the schedule plays sure. out, but the, it's interesting to, I like that we're seeing season tickets. I know people are excited, especially people that live in maybe some of the rumored hubs that we'll talk about later. Maybe, maybe. Right. But sign them up. I, I, like I said, this, this to me was big news at the beginning of the week and it got overshadowed the next day though. I mean, mm-hmm. the next day. No, I don't think anybody expected news to be coming out on a Tuesday, at least for the USFL, maybe some other leagues. I, but this one, whew, Sign us up. I mean, they they, yeah. they they definitely chose, of course, a strategic day, as everyone's pointed out. You know, if you if you haven't been living under a rock in the football community, you know, the XFL was doing quarterback allocations on that to on that Wednesday or Tuesday. I keep mixing this up. Um, and so, yeah, people were like, well, you know, is this when are they going to happen? It's good. It's got to be soon enough because November has been you know, their month Mm -hmm. that they've been doing things. And (laughs) sure enough, you know, as we jump in, I think it was around like 6 a.m. Some folks in our discord caught wind of, oh, wait a minute. These at USFL showboats accounts posted logos. Yep. Because it was like, it was like a couple days ago. It just said football (laughs) for the name with like a black, uh, just like a black uh, square for the profile image. Yeah. Right. I mean, look, cyber sleuths, they are um, 6 a.m. They tested it out and dropped them. I don't know if it was on accident, if it was to truly test these accounts or not, mm-hmm. but the logos drop. People go, wait a minute. And then sure enough, they don't wait around. They drop a post. And as you guys see, they are coming home. They are going to Memphis, Tennessee. You folks out there in Memphis are going to be getting the showboats returning with new colors, mm. new logo, new setup, uniforms re- revealed soon. They are a hub now. They're going to be hosting your ref gamblers over there. Yeah. And you know what? Soon, it, by the end of the season, it might as well just be the gamblers' home venue because we're going undefeated this year, baby. All in. Good God. All wins. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, someone brought up on our discord. Um, it was about, I think it was, uh, because showboat, you think about a riverboat, mm-hmm. riverboat casinos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, oh, look, yeah. Either, either way, look, either the boat, the boat, the house always wins or you get lucky. <laughs> you take home winnings on the boat. I'll tell you this. So I've noticed that the, the showboats, their, their like slogan, their catchphrase is showtime. And, mm-hmm. and I, I can't remember if I'm making this up in my head or if it's a real thing, but is there a movie you might be able to tell me, maybe it's Ace Ventura. Maybe it's, it's one of those Jim Carrey movies. It's showtime. Is that a thing? Oh, that's the mask. The mask. There we go. That's so I'm not crazy. Cause I was that when I started thinking the mask, I was like, is it, it's showtime or smoking. And then I started double guessing oh, wait, 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 myself. Sorry. You're right. It's smoking. That or is says. it both? I don't know. Or is this a Mandela effect? Either no, way, no, if it exists, I, I, that's the I gift of this. For, 
team. I know for a fact in the mask it's smoking. Um, <laughs> I totally misplaced that. Um, but I mean, I it fits the I mean it fits the vibe. Showboats, which look um, for for those that are curious, the Memphis Showboats they were originally part of the OG USFL. Which, by the way, some of you might have noticed in these video announcements, they are not shying away from talking about the OG USFL anymore. Mm -hmm. um, that settlement or whatever they disclosed outside of court, basically that is confirmed that they can basically talk about the legacy teams yep. again. Um, there is no holding back because they talked about Reggie white during the press release or during that press conference mm -hmm. at Liberty stadium. When Daryl Johnston brought him up by the way, um, I mean, they referenced it in their video about going to Tennessee. You know, you see the old Memphis showboats memorabilia all over and some of the video clips from oh, back yeah. in the day in that video, they are not going to shy away from it anymore. This is signs that they will, I'm wondering how much they lean into this. This is the first sign of, I think, things to come for broadcast elements, for other things they can do with it now. Um, I mean, Steve Earhart, for crying out loud, helps run the Liberty, yep. <laughs> Liberty Bowl. So. Well, this is what we talked about in the speculation zone last week. And so I love to see like, okay, where were we, where were we right? Where were we wrong? And so when I was talking to Jim, I said, well, I mean, if they're going to go, because I was speculating, well, if if they're going to Memphis and we have the Steve Earhart thing, maybe that's part of the settlement. So I feel like I might have been wrong on that piece of it, maybe having like an ownership stake. But he feels like there's some involvement because I was dead right on the Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium, which, I mean, that one feels like an easy get. If you're going to go to Memphis, that's probably where you're going to end up playing. Mm -hmm. But I loved seeing the, the quick turnaround from speculation zone to confirmation zone. You know what I mean here? But similar to the Birmingham announcement, season tickets in Memphis. You can already pre-register right now. Now, here's, here's the thing. We got the 15th, Birmingham, 16th, yep. Memphis. So you got it back-to-back. -back. And let's keep in mind here, we're talking three-ish hours away from each of these stadiums. That gives super fans an opportunity. If you want to go to both, you kind of can. If you want, if you want, it's if you're a super not, fan, it's not crazy, you know, and, and here's, here's some other things that I like about the Memphis hub for one thing. And I, and I think a bunch of people just brought this up after both the, when we, I'm just going to say both the USFL and the XFL, you know, in 2021, the league announced teams and they didn't announce Memphis and people went, okay, maybe in the future, kind of surprised it. Some people said kind of surprised they didn't choose that market. I'm like, you know what? I can see either way, but I, I get it. You know, Tampa Bay kind of also very historical market. We'll get into that in a second, of mm -hmm. course, on thoughts about that. Um, and then the XFL didn't do it. And we're like, okay, wait a minute. Memphis is just chilling there. Someone's got to grab this. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden, a few months ago, there were rumblings of, well, maybe Memphis is in the fray, just in a different capacity where one of the eight teams has to flip and we put one on hiatus or we kill one off. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, this is, this is becoming fascinating. So, you know, the sh here's the deal. Memphis as a football destination, where does this fit? Look at what they did with Birmingham. Birmingham, I consider as the Mecca of alt football in general. Mm -hmm. It is had every alt football property you can name arena football. We've had world league there. Mm -hmm. We've had the, oh, the USFL of old, the XFL to 1.0 went mm -hmm. there at a time. I mean, they have had any, the CFL, you name it. They have had a team. You know what other cities had that as well? Memphis, Tennessee. Oh yeah. It is. If it's not Birmingham, you can make an argument just as much that Memphis also deserves that mark. They have had any name in the book. They've even had the NFL come through there. Although that was more funny how that story plays out. If you ever want to read up the Tennessee Titans mm -hmm. having their high or the Tennessee Oilers, Oilers, yeah, having their one season there and how that was a debacle. They're kind of. I mean, it's not like it, it is with St. Louis now with like the Rams, mm -hmm. but they're pretty. They're a bitter city towards the NFL for you know from what oh, yeah. from years past. It, it's kind of funny. Um, so this that whole instance. Then you had the AAF, which people brought up. Okay, why, why is Memphis the choice? Is it really that big of a deal? Well, think about this. I mean, they were one of the they were up more in the upper echelon of attendance mm -hmm. in the AAF with a two and six roster back in the day. Yeah. Um, and the AAF. I mean, they were focusing a lot on. I think making sure you have like San Antonio and Orlando who were winning teams with big markets at the time. They were like, let's push these, let's get these. 
Memphis is going to get a full push. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be the biggest marketing effort for that city in terms of football, really since the showboats were in town back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to, they want to be, they want to make it just like how Birmingham embraced it. You know, they talked about in the video economic impact, yep. which Birmingham it's been discussed widely. The, the city, it got a profit out of this. It got money from bringing the league to Birmingham, Alabama. Memphis is going to probably get the same thing if you do it right. Mm-hmm. And I think that they already seen they can do it right. The city lines up in that facet with those attributes. You know, uh, I would say a blue collar esque Southern city that doesn't have a team but wants to have a stable football franchise there that has had the history and they get a shot to rebirth that fan base. It all lines up. Mm-hmm. Either way. So, well, you know what else was interesting? There's a couple of interesting things that came out of the press conference. So, mm-hmm. Tamu, not there. Different yeah. guy in the quarterback corner there with Coach Haley. Uh, Brady White. Brady White, which uh, I rec- believe I recall, and I could be wrong, but I feel like he has uh, some local ties to the Memphis area. Am he I does. right in that? Yeah, yeah, Memphis yeah. Memphis quarterback himself. Yeah, see, okay, I'm not crazy. I thought so, and I... I need to trust my gut sometimes. Now you put it out, Zach. So I, I think we, so just so everybody knows, we both run the USFL podcast uh, accounts, right? But the tweet you put out, you're a hundred percent right on the bizarro world of it seeing, is. of seeing coach Haley in, in blue. I mean, it, it was, it shouldn't be weird, but it was weird. You know, it, it, they try They played that so naturally. Like, Hey, here's Todd Haley. Everyone else is like, Oh God, wait a minute. <laughs> it really, it, cause it was adjustment period. It's, it's strange seeing they switch from red, silver and black, which some people were wondering, Hey, maybe it's cause you know, they red, silver and black, red, silver and black, but they switched up to blue and gold, which, you know, it takes a minute to process that, you know, and I think some OG USFL fans definitely had some words, at least on Facebook, they had a few words like, Oh, you messed with the colors. But look, they did this, you know, a, they're trying to diversify the colors. I think, Mm -hmm. I think some of the wordage of all red teams did go, maybe that did go to the league's head. That's a speculative thing, but I'm going to take a stab that it did. Other factor, the Memphis Grizzlies are the big game in town. What colors do they have? Dark blue, gold, and light blue. It's a, it's a branding matchup. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, it's how people talk about how the Maulers should adapt to gold, white, and black. It's, it's the city's colors right now. It's their thing. Plus the blues, you know, mm, Memphis. Mm. I mean, yes, it's the song. It's the genre, but I mean, come on. It, it fits right into the whole profile too. There's reasons why they did it. Um, that logo is great. By the way, I, 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 I they had shown on the trademark website, mm-hmm. what it was looking in the outline and the colors made it pop. Oh yeah. Way better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> now I will say it is kind of, and this might be, I might be crazy. Let me just stay, say that first. I might be crazy. I might be a lunatic. Well, we know I am a little bit, but I might be full on, <laughs> but am I crazy or does the showboats logo kind of look like the bandits logo as far as the shape and the outline? Like I see the front of the boat, like the bandana over the bandits mouth, right? Now, I mean, yeah. if you put them over each other, they're clearly different logos. But I wonder if there is part of that as part of the logo redesign because, they, you know, they didn't go with the original logo. You know, they changed mm-hmm. the colors, but they also came out with a new logo. And I would say probably the most drastically different logo compared to the rebrands that we saw last year, right? So the stars, right. similar, Panthers, similar, Breakers, so on down the line. Now, when we look at the showboats, I'd say... That one is pretty far removed from the original one, which, yeah, there's some people online, but I like, well, one, my favorite color is blue, so it, 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 I, I like it. Okay. I think it pops. But I did see, I don't know, maybe it's me trying to put things together that don't belong together, but it feels like they were maybe trying to give it like a little homage of like where they came from because they played in Bandit, la- uh, Bandit well, in Tampa Bay last year, or well, before you know what they, I mean. Right, and before they dropped this logo, so... I think if you look at it, you can go to the bandits Twitter account right now. Mm. To me, this looks like their old, sh- the bandit shoulder pad logo, like the, just the bandit head. Mm. Like they're trying to do the same motion, kind of the forward, like, I guess 
I guess more slick angle angular th- yep. thing. I'm trying to talk like a designer. I'm not a designer <laughs> guy automatically, but th- that's that's what I'm trying to do. So that's what I'm thinking. I mean, the uniforms haven't even been revealed yet. They tease them. Yep. By the way, it's coming. They t- clearly they tease them in the same video style as they did last year's in. Um, but yeah, I mean the the it, I can see it. You know, and I don't know. They they had a challenge ahead of them when you know some of the rumored stuff was swirling on the bandits take a seat, the showboats come up into play. Um, I, and I hear, I want to kind of jump into this while we're discussing, you brought, you brought it with the shoulder mm-hmm. pad or with the logo itself, kind of with a similar, I guess, flow that it was with the, with the other secondary. And I think they did as best they could given what was probably going to be a response. Honestly, there wasn't as much a blowback from it as I thought there was going to be. Um, and maybe that's a sign that they were on the right path of, okay, this market wasn't as much as the others embracing. That's not saying there were, they were like bad fans. There were great fans. Mm-hmm. Like dude, Paul Jackson, we met him in yeah. person opening week. Dude and his son were, I mean, they, this son was dressing up as the bandit mm-hmm. himself. Like, I, I, there are great fans of the bandits. I just think that they're looking at this and going as they have been, well, how do we capitalize and grow the league and make it to where it is a stable property? And there's no stadium options. I think they're realistic for a hub right now in Tampa Bay or that they're not going to go to all cities yet. Mm -hmm. Um, Memphis, Tennessee, as you'll see in the press release, by the way, was kind of just thrusted on them as oh, crap, we might want to look into this because of the fact that, well, big name, big name, a corporate head for FedEx, Fred Smith, apparently had his uh, hand in having this deal at least get kickstarted. So there's a few things at play. And, you know, they put they did that. I think they did it right. They said we're on hiatus. We are going to attempt. We're going to come back as soon as possible. But for now, we will bid you adieu. And they they still have them on the website. Mm -hmm. It's listed as a heritage team. They have not discarded the bandits. It's just that, as we've been told many times by people in the league and out of the league, it is about building a fiscally responsible league that has good football product. If you were pick, if I were to come to you and say, look, Memphis, Tennessee, with all this alt football history sitting right here, they have Fred Smith, who is the corporate founder of FedEx, asking how they can bring back a old legacy USFL team that had decent following in the day to Memphis, Tennessee. And you have Tampa Bay who's sitting here probably has no prospects of getting a hub Mm -hmm. or city anytime soon. And the league is already promising. They're trying to expand by, by some accounts by next year. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you picking? I don't know about you. I'm probably picking Memphis, Tennessee in that regard if I had the choice. A hundred percent. Well, and you even saw it in the press conference, Brian Woods, which we don't see a lot from Brian Woods. We don't hear a lot from Brian Woods, but he said something interesting, right? He he went up there. He said he got a call from Fred Smith. And like you said, said, how do we get a team in the league? Instantly calls Eric Shanks and says, we need to get on the phone with Fred Smith now and make this a reality because, I mean, you hit the points. The league is trying to move into cities. If there's an option where they can play now, yeah, they're going to explore that over a place that maybe they might have to wait a couple of years. Now, again, I don't live in Florida. I don't live anywhere near Memphis, but I'm my guessing is that it's probably a lot more cost effective in, in the Memphis area. Maybe not with the taxes. I don't, that's where I'm not sure, but baseline cost. Yeah, probably, probably a little bit, uh, Wig, a little bit of wiggle room there and i th- the other thing you brought up right it is kind of one of those spring league meccas and mm-hmm. memphis looks a lot different than it did the last time a lot of these leagues tried to enter it uh, you know i was talking about this the other day especially now in a world where remote working is a thing people mm-hmm. don't need to live in the cities i mean i'm a great example i used to live in the cities forever but once I started working remote, I live in the middle of nowhere because I can. I, I, as long as I have internet, I'm fine. I don't have to worry about an hour, two hour commute. So there's more people moving out to these, what would have been smaller cities that are now becoming 
bigger cities. I mean, Birmingham is a great example of that. Memphis is a great example of that of these smaller, large cities that are really turning it into their own metropolis. And I think it's almost a perfect time to strike for a USFL in that area mm -hmm. because, well, the NFL, we talked about it before. They were there for a little spot of tea, but then they had their own things. They moved on. Since then, you know what? They don't have they don't have uh, football, you know, professional football, but they got the bowl games. They have bat, the NBA's there. You know, things are picking up when it comes to the sports morale. It's not like this is why I always said Arizona is a tough market, Arizona, because nobody that lives in Arizona is from Arizona. And so it's mm -hmm. hard for people to really be invested into those local teams. Like uh, I would go to Lions games, Red Wings games, Tigers games, and there was always more Detroit fans than there were Arizona fans. Even when Arizona was doing good, no matter the sport, just because there's so many people from Detroit. Whereas I think something like Memphis, there's people that have probably been waiting to see some football. And let's, you know what? The South loves football. The South just loves football. And Memphis, I feel like it's got a, a similar atmosphere to Birmingham or it's got a nice little nightlife. You know what? You want something affordable to do on the weekends. Well, you know what? We got a new team. Get signed up. And I mean, we'll speculate well, on a lot music. of this. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I have never been to Memphis, Tennessee, uh, but I have wanted to go for the music scene. This will be my chance to go for that. Uh, so I'm I'm thrilled to be wanting to head there for at least one game. And I'll tell you that that's kind of your thoughts are kind of like mine, where you look at how Birmingham structure, you look at Memphis, you know, um, to me, those di those diagrams, at least the metrics of how those cities are laid out. And I think the I think if you play into the whole not only the economic impact, but the let's display like they did with Birmingham, let's mm -hmm. display to the world how we've changed or how we've grown. You know, we're at, you know, Memphis, Tennessee. I think people know about Memphis, Tennessee as a, as a music city. But I think maybe this is the opportunity where it's like, look, we did this with Birmingham. We showed up Birmingham, you know. We can get, I mean, I'm wondering if you do the same as with Birmingham, you play local ads, mm -hmm. like do that ad buy type of deal where, you know, you give them at least like one or you give them like a certain amount per half. Like it was with Birmingham. We remember, we all remember the world game oh, yeah. ones and all the Birmingham local tourism ones that were played at on Fox and NBC. I would not be surprised if that's part of the deal where it's Memphis, Tennessee gets that part where their tourism section mm -hmm. gets a boost from that as well. Um, and I mean, I think that. You know, like I said, the the market itself, the I think the teams rep there, it's it seems to have hold. I also think that there are football fans there that they want their own team. I mean, Memphis for years, back in the nineties and at least in the eighties, you know, the USFL, you know, people thought the USFL when it came there and left that it showed off that the that that city could host a team well. Mm -hmm. You know, same as how Jacksonville, the Bulls, without the Jacksonville Bulls it can be argued that Jacksonville might have had to wait longer to get the Jaguars, mm -hmm. which it's funny how that got skewed because when the Jaguars were coming in, Memphis was also in the running as a finalist to get an NFL expansion that season, and they didn't get it. And part of the reason why the bitterness to the NFL is that case is because they got burned multiple times by the league not getting an expansion, and they haven't gotten talked about ever since. Right. So I, I think that this is great that they get to embrace their own pro team and do it the way they want to do it through this. And it's so far so good. I mean, since we're, we're talking, you know, we're recording this only somewhat after, you know, this announcement was made. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already up to past 3,000 on Twitter alone. Well, this is what I wanted to talk about. So they're outpacing two of the new XFL teams when it comes to mm -hmm. followers. So we have the Brahmas and the uh the vipers sorry I, you know every time i say well, brahmas the, it's like i have the to throw up a well, little the guardians bit. but but the guardians it shocks me because orlando was such an optimistic aaf market right 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 that's what's surprising to me is that memphis has outpaced two teams that are also drafting and have had multiple weeks of being revealed and they i mean like so orlando i i was i'm surprised it's because they have a Las teddy Vegas, bear for a logo i can't unsee it now the, <laughs> the you said it and i, I agree it did <laughs> It looks kind of like a teddy bear. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, they tried to stick with the old New York one, but it's, it, they took the bite away, in my opinion. The red did it for me. The green, it changed it. That's yeah. what it did. It was It's the green. But yes, the showboats are doing well so far in terms of exposure, and they, they're going to keep going. Like I said, the uniforms are coming out here soon. You know, That's going to only boost the morale. Um, personally, 
I know some people have had thoughts on this. I'm hoping that they do an adaptation of the pin of the spoke wheel logo that they did back in the eighties. Yes. Um, if you guys have seen any helmets of the showboats from back in the day, or if you look up Reggie white Memphis showboats, their logo is half of the drive wheel of an old Mississippi river boat. And I'm hoping that they stick with something that's modernized like that. Some people say stick with the boat logo and I'm going, that's a little busy. Mm Mm-hmm. To me, that's a busy logo to slap on a helmet. I thought the Bandits logo was a busy one to slap on a helmet. I know they did it back in the day, but I thought they could update it, and they didn't. Mm-hmm. To me, that's what you do. Put and go back, like just like how the Panthers decided, you know, they'll stick with how they did their own sure. setup from back in the day. Take that one. Mm-hmm. That's a good nod. Modernize it. I think it'll look real nice on a helmet. Yeah, I well, you know, hopefully we'll know soon. I mean. All I can say is we're a week out from Thanksgiving ish. Mm-hmm. And I already have a lot to be thankful for with the news that we've already discussed. And there's even more that oh, man, boy, is there more. What a crazy week. I know. Well, we, and we still haven't even gotten to the quotes. Yeah, I know. No, Sorry. I, we, I mean, there's been so much to, to get points out across as to why this is such a, to me, a massive win for the league. Like I said, you're still at eight teams. I understand. I feel sympathy for bandits fans for sure, but you got to understand if you're a fan of the league itself, you have to be happy with this choice of going to this market. You know, uh, the sacrificial lamb is the bandits, but it's not in vain and it's not fully sacrificed. It's just put on the back burner. Keep that in mind. Well, and I'll say this, it, it, and I think I might've touched on this point last week. I would much rather them move a team before they've played in their location than after Mm -hmm. right because that's that's the real kick is okay you played a year in tampa bay and then you're like all right sorry guys we're moving to memphis now i mean it's almost one of those no harm no foul now we know there's some folks out there that are uh, yeah but there's still hope well it's like how the uh back in xfl (laughs) 2.0 like midway through that season they thought the vipers were going to be moving to orlando there was heavy Mm -hmm. talk on that happening so like that's so this is completely different again you know for as much as people have had their say on the hubs, that is one of the nice flexibilities of this at this stage. As much as you do want to get in all their markets, you do have some options if you really want to test it mm-hmm. out and say, we can get some down packed, dedicated fans. That's testing. And this has so far resulted early result re- returns seem to be very favorable right now that this will be a good, a good hit for the league. Let's get into some quotes. I've been wanting to, yeah. I want to do these, but there's so much words on this. That I, you and I want to say, sure. I had to got to get everything in. All right, here we go. Daryl Johnston is, you know, he, of course he's going to lead off. He led off this whole conversation, um, starts off and kicks off with we're home. It's been the whole message of this entire thing, you know, stating like we're back, except mm-hmm. now we're home. So quote, we're home says Daryl Johnston, USFL executive vice president of football operations. All this comes from the press release, by the way, uh, quote, the showboats return to Memphis for the 2023 season. The USFL is appreciative of the tremendous support and commitment from the city of Memphis mayor, Jim Strickland and countless other community leaders for bringing professional football back to the bluff city. And, Strickland actually does get his own quote on this. Uh, Mayor Strickland, I could not be happier to bring the showboats back home to Memphis, says the mayor. I have said I have so many fond memories of going to USFL games. The atmosphere was amazing. The spring weather was beautiful. There was quality football and it was an overall great experience. I know this time will be no different and I cannot wait to go to the first game on April 16th. So again, clarifying their first game kicking off is a day after the Birmingham stallion. So they're going to be playing uh Sunday. It mm. sounds like Saturday will be reserved for that. At least so far for the Birmingham squad, getting their game, kicking things off. Brian Woods also, as we talked, he said a few things and brought up, of course, the big eyebrow raising, uh, quote on, fr- on Fred Smith's involvement in this entire process. Um, so here's his quote. Um, the USFL is committed to building a strong partnership with the Memphis community leaders, and we can't thank Fred Smith enough for the personal support and vision to make today's historic announcement possible, said Woods. Thanks to this legendary M- entrepreneur who is prominent, a prominent fixture in his community for the USFL and Memphis Showboats have come home to stay. Again, mm-hmm. they keep bringing up Mr. Smith's name. Now, am <laughs> so- I correct in this? Was it FedEx? Or w- I should have looked this up before the show, but I believe it was FedEx that is basically still in company in, in business because of gambling. Is that the company? Do you know this story? 
Uh, I know. I need to look this up. So I know it was either FedEx or uh, UPS. I'm almost certain it was FedEx where they couldn't pay payroll. Yeah. Yeah. How Fred Smith rescued FedEx from bankruptcy. This I am right. So essentially he was in jeopardy of not, not making payroll, went and okay. gambled all the money they had in the company, all, every cent one night and won. And that's why they're still in business. Showboat. Okay. It's showtime, baby. I'm just saying I, I am. I, that's a new story to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got educated right there all of a, all of a sudden on that regard. I, I wasn't crazy. <laughs> well, it, and this isn't even all the news, Zach. I mean, we no. talked about one hub. We talked about uh, two hubs. But one thing that we've gleaned out of this information, those first two announcements, is that there's at least three hubs. That's one thing that we can say at because least. we know who's hosting. There's two teams in Birmingham, two teams in Memphis. Well, that leaves a whole four teams, Zach, which kind of leads us to our next story. New coach already making an impact, John D. Filippo. Some online have referred to him as Loose Lip Flip. I don't know who came up with that name. It wasn't me. But Loose Lip Flip, he joined the football playbook with Rick Saratella. And, you know, it's funny, Zach. We look, I, I was thinking back to our early episodes in the lead up to season one. And it seemed to be a common theme. And, you know, coaches would join uh, different radio shows and boy, we would get all sorts of news, whether it's coaching hires or maybe some insight on what's going to happen with the season, how it's going to play out. And coach flip, man, he didn't even wait. Long. It was a day after Zach. I think <laughs> I do maybe two days after. And we got this quote. There's eight teams in the league. Two teams will be based in Birmingham. Two teams will be based in Memphis. And again, keep in mind, Zach, this is before the Memphis announcement. Right. So even more smoke <laughs> to what was already becoming close to a bonfire right. at that point. Now, here's the last one. And we'll talk about this a lot more here in the speculation zone. But then he goes on to say, and then four teams are going to, going to be playing in Detroit. Aha. 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 Man, now this leaves us in quite the predicament. And this is what I want. I want to hear from y'all online. If, and before we even get into this news, mid, mid episode question, where the hell? So let's say the league is in Memphis, it's in Birmingham and it's in Detroit. Where the hell should we do spring stock this year? I mean, I want to hear from y'all because we want the biggest attendance. And I honestly, we might even do. Who knows what we're going to do this year, but you let us know. And then we're, we're going to start working through the details, start working through the logistics. But Zach, I mean, what do you take from this news? Because, oh, and hey, let's just mention, it wasn't too long after that that interview was removed from YouTube and all of the other places. Yeah, I, I hear it was uh, privated. Yes. I wonder I wonder who had a, <laughs> had a say in that one, I, my, I guess. Um, look, I, 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 I am fine with any of the three. I mean, I've, I have good, I have good friends in Birmingham. Thanks to last season. I can't thank that enough. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would love to possibly go back. I mean, I'm going back there for a game either way. Mm -hmm. So no matter what spring stock, that's, what's going to be crazy because right now Memphis and Birmingham, that's a hard, that's hard to discuss the new shiny toy, or you go back to, you know, where the common grounds are, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a tough decision now for this third one. Um, in the speculative section, of course, we still can't confirm any of that. Again, the league has to say their own thing. That That is how this works. Um, you can talk about the sources and everything, but the league's got to say their own thing. So we can only talk about it as, you know, heavy rumors mm -hmm. at the time. I mean, look, it, look, you got, you got coach flip saying it. And as of when we're jumping on to record, uh, staff writer, Tony Paul at the Detroit news, who, by the way, he was the first one to report way back before the start of 2021 season that, the USFL would starting initial talks with Detroit that they are definitely now they're saying that they are definitely trying to explore talking in Metro Detroit as well as in the Eastern Michigan area. Um, so real quick, which, so I think yeah. this is a good point. Should we jump into the speculation zone? 
I mean, you might as well look. I mean, that's because that's the wild card. If you're talking that question, let's jump into the speculation zone. Let's kick that speculation zone intro because it's too sweet. We can't speculate without this intro. Kick it, baby. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> the speculation zone. We go. All right. So yes, welcome to the speculation zone officially. So as we said, already already done a few. Already kind of started the pre-roll to it, but now we are fully in. <laughs> And on board again, the question of our, of course, spring stock is really what is prominent here because we might have another hub at play. And as I just said a second ago, uh, reporting for, by Tony Paul of the Detroit news, he's a staff writer there, uh, made the initial write up about the USFL's interest over in Detroit. Um, he now writes, and this is the title of it. USFL explores Metro Detroit hub for 2023 Eastern Michigan has been contacted. So what does this all mean? So first, the Eastern Michigan part. Um, by Eastern Michigan, he's referring to Eastern Michigan University, the the mid-American conference school up in Yippalanti, 40 minutes outside of Metro Detroit. Um, the article has a ton of stuff talking about the, at least to his source's knowledge, one that he cannot disclose, um, what they are discussing in the Detroit area. Again, this is all based on the source he's talking to. There's nothing official from the league, but this is all according to Tony mm -hmm. Paul. So first things first, they are looking at Detroit as a hub option. They are exploring that heavily right now. And this has been talked about for over, oh, yeah. for pretty much a year. They, they, Detroit's been on the radar ever since their social media following blew up in the beginning of the of 2021. Um, they are very much wanting to go out there. Um, there's been two options now. According to this article, you have two different stadium options the league's looking at. One seems to be more of the favorite right now, but the other is still at play. Um, we knew about Ford mm -hmm. Field. That was the initial talk, that Ford Field would be at play uh, for a potential hub. That is currently one of the USFL's stadiums that's on the radar. It's in downtown Detroit. It's right across from Tiger, St from Tiger Stadium. It makes a lot of sense if you want to go right there. Thing is, it's a busy concert venue during the summer and spring. So, and probably you have to think about stadium. Rental oh yeah. Cost it's not well. cheap. That is not going to be a cheap one. Detroit is a busy. I mean, think about this. Detroit might be not a big player in terms of what you think of Detroit today, mm -hmm. but in terms of a media market, it's kind of a big media market. If you look into it, uh, it's top 15. I remember if it's top 15 at the very least it's top 10. If I'm remembering the order right from my last time checking out the media sizes. Um, so if they can get the Metro Detroit, that would be a massive win for the league if they do it where it's fiscal for mm -hmm. them and makes sense. If not, here's the one that has been in some circles that we've talked in some community circles. We've talked, well, maybe this is a secondary option. Not sure if they would fully go here, but according to Tony Paul, this seems to be kind of the one that has the most steam behind it is going to Eastern Michigan university mm -hmm. playing at Reinerson stadium, which is known as the factory out there. Uh, and that's again, 40 mile. It's a 40 minute drive out from Detroit. It's still in the, it's still in the suburban it's Metro area. Detroit. It's, it's Metro like, Detroit is huge. And Ipsy. Hey, you know what? There's a lot worse places than Ipsy. Ypsilanti is a not too bad. And I'll tell you great pizza out there. Good times. E EM. What? That makes me want to oh, go. Yeah. Oh, you know, to Detroit style. Have you ever had Buddy's Pizza? No, Ooh. I've not had Buddy's Pizza. Sign us no. up. I can't, this is why we almost have to do spring style. If, if, if. We're in the speculation if it zone. Is the, if it is the case. I, I, I'm not saying it's yet at the, you know, at the stage where it was a week ago with Memphis where it's like, oh, my God, there's so much smoke that there's got to be a fire under there somewhere, you know, like about to blow up. This is more of like, okay. There's a lot surrounding it. We just need to get the final pieces in order if this is the case. Um, now, Reinerson Field, some things you want to mention here. It, it, it holds about 30,000 fans in the stadium. Um, they had spent a few million recently to upgrade locker and facilities over there. Um, interesting part as well, it is designed as a dual-purpose stadium and the fact that it has a track and field surrounding it. Um, it also is a gray field. Um, the turf is to match one of the secondary colors of Eastern Michigan. Uh, so that would be a little caveat to playing there if you did. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas of course, again, the benefits of Ford field, you're downtown. It's a standard turf field, which is something that's specified in this article, by the way, they want a turf field, something that can hold up to the weather conditions. Cause think about this, Birmingham and Memphis, 
Southern mm-hmm. weather. It's a little warmer. Yeah, there's going to be some rain, but you don't have you don't have a potential threat of say snow in April. Mm-hmm. Michigan, oh, yeah, it still is there. It's not as bad as say if you played in February and mm-hmm. March, but. Trust me, from you living oh, up yeah. there and from me living up near Chicago, snow still can be a thing in April. I've seen it so snow in May. Want, so. Yeah, I mean, you still want to have stable field conditions, and it doesn't look sloppy. Mm-hmm. Um, because not only does it, you don't want it to look sloppy in terms of play, you don't want it to look sloppy on television as well, and the fans there as well that are coming out there. You Which know? is probably the biggest benefit. Sorry, sorry, Zach, to cut you off. But no, that's no. probably the biggest I, I, benefit I think, if you can swing a Ford Field. You don't have to worry about the weather at all. And I mean, for mm-hmm. fans sake, yeah, they're probably going to want to, in some of those April days, it's a chilly boy up there, man. That lake effect well, that, will kill you. Well, that's probably why if they, if indeed, like I said, they are, if these reports are indeed the case, which I'm, I'm going to say that, you know, I mean, the Detroit news has been on top of this whole storyline for a mm-hmm. while now. So there there's, I think there might be smoke there. Um, look, Metro Detroit, like if you can get it in downtown and get it to where you are getting the fee you want and you are not going crazy with overspending, which again, you know, you add on a stadium, you're adding on a lot of additional costs. That's why they're doing these hubs. They want to do it to where it's slow growth to where they can improve their product, get the funding. And then it's not worrying about going into the red instantly like other leagues of the past have or like what the XFL is going to have to worry Mm. about. So, you know, this is where this comes into play. It's balancing your cost. Do you, it, a cost-benefit analysis, if you will. Okay, I'm spending this much. Will being in Metro Detroit be worth that price tag per game to play in in Ford mm-hmm. Field? Survey says, to me, if you get the right deal, you go to Ford Field because you're in downtown. Right. You might as well go in the heart of the city where all the sports teams play. If you can't get the right deal, Ypsilanti ain't too bad. Like you said, it's Metro Detroit. Mm-hmm. It, it still is that. And it's East, Eastern Michigan. It doesn't have too bad of a setup. It also is a turf field. So sure. it all would work out. But to me, if I'm doing this, if the USFL has any chance of getting Ford Field for a reasonable price that seems to fit Fox's mm-hmm. budget, you don't even bother with looking at EMU. You go straight over there. But right now... I'm assuming the university price point still looks a bit better. They're just trying to maybe, if I'm guessing, and if this is the case, they want to cover the base and say, are you sure? Well, you know, let me throw another little speculation zone inside of a speculation zone out there. Birmingham is a great example of this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Protective stadium. They were home for most of the games, but you know what? They had some overlap with the world game set up and some other things. And so then they played out of Legion field. What mm-hmm. if this is to shore up the the OSP, as I always call it, the oh shit plan, right? Ford Field, they're booked on a weekend. You can't solve your schedule and move things around to where you, you need that stadium that day. Hey, you know mm-hmm. what? You have Reinerson 40 minutes down the way. And maybe you play one or two of your games out of another field instead of Ford Field. But if you can get those to the late end of your season and keep the early season in Ford Field, speculation zone everyone but then you save yourself from that colder weather because i'll say if you can get into like early may mid may you're st- you're gonna be dealing with some decent weather you might get some rain but you're gonna get i mean birmingham you're gonna get rain memphis you're gonna get rain you're gonna get rain whether it's spring fall summer in some of these places michigan especially because it's surrounded by water i mean mm-hmm. snow and rain it's the lake effect but Maybe, maybe that's what we're seeing in play here is we're going to see maybe a majority in Ford field, but they need to have that backup. Maybe there's an Elton John playing or Mr. Worldwide. We talked about him before. Maybe he's out Taylor, there. Taylor Swift. Oh, I there mean, you go. Talk about, talk about someone in the news right now for the ticket. Prices. Well, maybe, and and you, you know what? Or Swift. Maybe Colin Coward's touring and he's booked up. Maybe Colin Coward. The herd live is at Ford field and they just, they cannot move that date. And so they're going to go have to go live. play at Reinerson Field, you know. Maybe, maybe, who knows. I feel I feel like that would be such a risk if you did like his hot takes in a live room just have like I mean, that's why they should do it. That's why they should Heard, do it. Hire me. I'll get you. Every, talk talk to talk to Eric Shanks. He'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll send he'll send a DM to Colin. You can 
You can link up with yeah, him. Have his people call my people. <laughs> I'll give mm-hmm. him the what for. I, I I don't think that is a that is out. Of, I don't think that should be fully out of the cards if you're exploring Detroit. Um, if you can make it work, um, I think what I think though in the other regard of finding one stadium, um, to me having just a single solid location, not having any confusion locally, mm-hmm. is also helping. Unlike with protect. Unlike with Protective versus Legion, I mean, yeah, they were across town, but Ypsilanti is still sure, 40 minutes. Sure, sure. Um, and if you live closer to downtown and you're a fan and saying, all right, we're going out to EMU, mm-hmm. eh, well, some of those people might say, okay, I ain't going this week. And then, you know, NBC goes back and looks at Fox and goes, well, wait a minute, what do you, we wanted the fans right, this right, year, right. you know, which that is the, I think that's part of why you're saying, okay, one location because A, what do fans mm-hmm. think? I want consistency. I want facts and details to what I'm going to. I don't want to be shoved around. Any extra steps that I have to take makes me a little can make it a little more irritating to do this or less enthusiastic about doing something mm-hmm. is how I see it. So I think the most direct is picking one. If you are going to do that, um, both options are have their own benefits. I have no problem with either. I personally just hope it's Metro Detroit, though, because I think Ford Field would be it would be a massive win if they could play in Ford. Well, and I think I, well, and I'll say this: I think it'll be a lot easier for people to get there because it's right on Woodward. I mean, it's so. Mm-hmm. Easy. I mean, all you got to do you drive down Woodward, you take that, a bus that, down that Woodward, is a, everything drives right there. I've been to my share of Lions games as a Bears fan, um, and I, I mean, my uncle and aunt live out there in Novi. It's a. I mean, that area in you know the sports complex mm-hmm. area there it's a really nice spot. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, I mean, it's not as, it's not as open as say what uptown was when we went there for Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 there's, there's more skyscrapers and like other things, but there's stuff to do around it. You know, restaurants, Greek town, baby. To hang out. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm hoping I'm like, if you like get that same atmosphere, mm-hmm. you know, much even like Memphis, think about Memphis, Tennessee. It's the same deal. You know, you have all these different venues you can go to to hang out and talk football or watch the game. You know, it's why I'm hoping that's the case. Reinerson, I think, would be great if you if you have to get a secondary option. It's not a bad secondary mm-hmm. option, and if it's the one that makes the most sense to where they aren't killing themselves with like fees per game, fine. I really badly want Ford Field to be the thing, though. That is, if they don't get it, oh, whatever. Mm-hmm. If they do get it, I'm freaking ecstatic, and I'm going to as many games there as possible. Oh sure, <laughs> so, I, I, and you know what? I'm not joking. My parents live in Illinois. It's you know, it's a five six hour drive, which actually I'm doing next Tuesday. I'm going up to Frankenmuth, baby. Look at Ooh. you, Frankenmuth, Frankenmuth, and Bronner's Christmas Village. I am mm. hype, and you know, I fly in. I fly into Chicago on Sunday. There's a White Castle right outside of O'Hare Airport. It's already my first stop, and I saw they have little waffle breakfast sandwiches now. They do. I got to get signed up on that. But sorry, we're still in the speculation zone. Oh, they. But no, it's fine. They. I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you those waffle sandwiches. I've had. I did try one for the first time about a month ago. They're Ooh. worth it. It's 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 everything you imagine. It's it's a McGriddle, but let better. me ask you this. So I saw, and I've actually known about this for a while. They have the classic White Castle burgers with the like lettuce mm-hmm. and to make uh, like a whole thing have you tried one of those yet Are yeah they good? it's uh it's a higher quality slider oh, i gotta get it i gotta get it. it it better better quality beef you get tomato lettuce and cheese you should oh, try it. i'm definitely ooh, try it. i'm so amped about some white <laughs> castle i told my boss that the other day i was like good news she thought it was something about work she's like what's up i said i'm gonna be, I, I get to eat white castle on sunday <laughs> she's like what look, the fuck hey, are you look, talking if, about and oh. if and when detroit is a hub we can go and possibly if we pick spring stock there, you know, we get to then have one of those. So cel- like, look, when we were over in mm-hmm. Birmingham, we celebrated our last night with Chris Easter night. Which was <laughs> our Easter which is, which, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy Easter. Solid Easter <laughs> choice. But, you know, imagine us grabbing a crave oh. case of 20 after after an excellent broadcast and watching the Panthers probably win against whoever the heck they're playing. I'm saying that with full so confidence. So let me let Jeff me Fisher turns it around this year. By let the way, let me correct you real quick. <laughs> Twenty pack is a crave clutch, a crave case. That's a thirty pack. But you're right. Wow, we're getting a crave case, buddy. And I'm and I'm the one that lives <laughs> in the area with white. Cases. I only remember it because 
Crave clutch sounds so funny. All I think of is like a, my wife's perch, like her clutch, you know, and I think that's what I, anyway, <laughs> I see. Anyway, anyway, I see. I see. So one last thing that came out of this write up and it's, it's funny. I've had other people say this too. There's been a lot of stuff. Well, we're doing three hubs and sticking, or is it still a chance there's four? Mm. And I've heard both ways. Some there's folks that are saying it's definitely three. If, if, and when Detroit is announced, if that is the case, you mm. know, but Tony, yeah, Tony Paul here, you know, again, these are his sources, but he's saying, and this isn't the first person I've heard this from Same either, here, by the yeah. way, that four hubs is definitely still on the table. It's at least a possibility. Um, Seemingly. It at least is, it is again, all we've been told by the league, you know, all options are on the table. So I'm like, all right, that's fair. Mm. Um, but this, I mean, he goes as far to even go beyond just like the fourth. He's like, he, he even says in his article here, and I'm going to read off the exact sentence, uh, quote, if there is one more hub, whether it's Detroit or Philadelphia, oh, 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 oh there yeah, it is. There yeah. it is. The, that hub would likely host three or four of the league's eight teams based on team geography. The U.S. Falls declined to comment on future sites. Um, the US, and then here's another sentence. The USFL continues to explore options for at least one more hub, possibly two. So, yeah, I know I read that first sentence off. It was actually after sure. that second one I told you, but I digress. They are still looking at four as an option. Um, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. which has been rumored as a potential hub site, is still at play as well. Uh, as the league is gone, if they, and as you may have seen with Memphis, the best possible uh, situation is what they are wanting. Mm -hmm. So Detroit, though, I mean, that's been so, it has been heavily rumored for over a year. I think they really badly just want to be there. If I am speculating hard on this, they see the metrics, they go, we got to get out there. Even though we had a, you know, we, even though we had a two and a two and eight roster last year, people like Jeff Fisher still, right. They like the swagger the guy brings. People want to see the Panthers. They are a legacy USFL team. They can lean heavy oh, now yeah. into the legacy of the Pan Panthers. Look, the last professional football team to win a championship in the state of Michigan I know. were the Panthers. I know. And here's the thing. If the Pan if the Panthers can turn this season around and they play in Detroit, people are showing up to that game. I mean, people go to the Lions game still, Zach, and I'll reiterate one playoff win, one playoff win, one playoff win in my almost 39 years of living, Zach. One, 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 Ooh, Zach, yeah. one playoff win. One. All we need to do if the Panthers play and like just football, win football games. Not, well, <laughs> Zachy boy, speaking of uh, football games. Bears and the Lions played last week. Who won that one again? I, you don't got. I. I. You Two know, weeks in a row. This know. is what the Lions do. They come in. I think I talked about this. They come in kind of hot. They don't even come in hot. They they almost win games in the beginning of the season where people are like, oh boy, these Lions are good. They're only losing by three. I'm like, but no, no, no. They're losing. And then they start playing really poorly, and everybody's like, well, ah, there's the Lions again. But then they beat the Packers. Then they beat the Bears. And all is right in the world. Now, the Bears, you know what? I kind of, I don't hate the Bears because I feel like you and I, you know, we're the NFC North. We always, there's one team, FTP. That one felt good. TP, FTP, baby. baby. I'll even take a worse draft pick if we can beat the Packers twice this year. I'll, you know what? Sign us up. Sign us up. And you know what? The Rams are serving us as, up a pretty nice pick as well. So, Next year, we're going to have really great picks. And you want to know the outcome, Zach? They're going to suck. They're going to be the Lions. That's what they do. <laughs> so the Panthers have a good opportunity here. If they, can, if they can turn things around. And I'll tell you, near the end of the year, the Panthers were one of those teams that their record, the way they played and the, the what their record was, didn't they didn't really correlate. They, you know what I mean? They were, they were scrappy in so many losses. I mean – that's one of the cases where I'm just like, dude, if you can put a few pieces together, I mean, it sounds like their quarterback room is coming back for the yeah. most part. You know, it, I mean, it wasn't fully written up by the league, but Josh love, you know, is there. It sounds like, I mean, there's been nothing on Paxton Lynch, but I'm assuming that they are wanting Paxton, Eric Berry, according to at least the USFL contracting setup, mm -hmm. he should at least still be there. And he has some solid flashes against the generals. So 
they're on the fence. Look, if you get a hub and you get a winning team out there in Detroit this season, you know, say the per- perfect case scenario, say you have three hubs and, and this is just in terms of league exposure and like fans getting rooted. I'm not saying if you're a fan of like the gamblers or of the breakers, you lose and big and you go and have a poor year that that's good. But say you have the three hub cities, all of them winning records, all get playoff mm-hmm. runs. If you're the league officer going, hell oh, yes. yeah. Why? Why are you like this? Because a, the stallions just won a championship. So that that city already is like, yep, we're sold for yep. back. Skip won a championship for us. We, we can hold that one till the day we die. Uh, the showboats, um, first year there, holy crud. We have a playoff berth. We have a good mm-hmm. team. Oh yeah. Good teams bring in fans. They bring in more in gate revenue because of the fact you want to see them mm-hmm. play. So there's that Michigan. Well, it's Jeff Fisher. And if he leads a playoff team and it's in Detroit that needs a win, in my opinion, in its football lineage. Well, and here's the thing, too. Why Think not? about the competition that the USFL will have in Detroit, right? So, you know, clearly they're not going to be competing with the NFL because that season's going to be over. No. But no, when no. it comes to the NBA and the NHL, I hate to be that guy, but I have a feeling those two teams aren't going to be making the postseason. I don't know. Maybe call it a hunch that the Wings and the Pistons. You know, here's the thing, Zach. I went and bought the yeah. NBA. Oh, bless you. I went and bought. Yeah, thanks. I went and bought the uh, the NBA league pass. I canceled it after the first week. Okay. I said I can't. I cannot put myself through this as a Pistons I fan. Lo- the first game the- we won. Oh, great. Yeah. No. Nah, no. Nah, can't do it to myself. Too much stress to be doing that. But I mean, it gives again the Panthers another opportunity. You have a winning team. Detroit has no winning teams. Tigers aren't good. Pistons aren't good. I mean, Lions, clearly, they're not good. You know what? Panthers, if they come in hot, they win the first two games. I think that's enough to draw some people in. Time to shine. I'm telling you, man, it's, you know, it's a great story as well uh, that I could see the league using, by the way, and my favorite player in the league, um, at least the one I rep on my jersey I got from Royal Retros, Terry Myrick. You know where Terry Myrick played? Hmm. You, know, you know where he played in college? Oh, Eastern Michigan. Oh, well, sign him up. Returning home, possibly. Welcome home if you go back to Ryerson. Yeah. The very nice. You know, that's got that would be pretty cool for him then if they do play there. Because think about that, right? Like returning, but in a professional setting, right? So sign him up there. I'm saying. I'm saying. He's going to the factory. Again, it's called the factory. Mm-hmm. So. If you, if you go to Ryan gray field, like I don't I said, know if we talked about, did we talk about the gray field? Uh, we mentioned it. I mean, I, I don't know if people actually, I wonder if how many people would say something about the gray field. I think it's cool. Being there. I mean, it's, it's yeah. nice. It's a college football thing to have the colored field turf sure. and all that, you know, it ain't no Boise state with the yeah. blue gray is pretty neutral. I, I think if you had like, I think if you played in Idaho and you said, Oh, our hubs, uh, boy, oh yeah, that'd be oh, rough. Got it with the blue. I think it'd be like, Ooh, <laughs> all right. Unless you came up with the you changed some team colors to make it work. But yeah, that one's my goodness. Um, but a lot, I mean, I, I don't know. Did we speculate about everything? I think we might have, I don't know. Uh, for, I mean, pretty much, you know, I mean, the, I mean, like I said, Fred Smith, we kind of talked oh, yeah. for, just as leading in, but I, I mean, pretty much look, if you're, if you're one to follow along with this whole hub, story i mean clearly the league is starting to lay down its tracks it's already laid down two mm-hmm. of them um it's possibly going to lay down one to two more but i mean if we're speculating hard as all as all lord without even saying anything's confirmed with from the league's view they it sounds like they want to be in detroit michigan mm-hmm. i don't knock them yep. for wanting to be in detroit michigan because to me you have an opportunity to jump jump in while you got the things. I mean, you talk about the Pistons. I mean, they're last I checked, there's three and eleven, and their star, their, Kate Cunningham is out for long term for an injury. Yeah, you know that's true. That's just for this year, by the way. I mean, that could change. But if you're looking at the sports scene for them right now, if they go to Detroit this coming season, mm-hmm. yeah, you get good. You you get you get a city rallying behind you. You get a playoff berth from retooling yep. you have jeff fisher on your roster as your head coach who hopefully learned from last year's mistakes i'm just telling you <laughs> it all could go so well there is a great scenario for detroit for fans out there in detroit michigan 
you have a team that if they if they can find a few ways to win, that's a playoff team. I mean, that's two steps away from a championship berth. That is three steps away from having a football team to be proud of for the first time in God knows how long. Well, since 1983. No, not even since 1983, <laughs> since the 50s when they won their last championship before there was a Super Bowl, when weirdly enough we're tied for the most championships pre-Super Bowl era with the Browns, who also have no Super Bowl wins. I don't know what happened with that whole merger switchover, but something tells me. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate Bob, on Bobby, that one. Bobby Lane curse on you. Bobby Lane curse yeah, on your family. My God. <laughs> Bobby Lane curse on your dog. I need a Bobby Lane jersey is what I need. I feel like that's my life sometimes. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. I, I can't wait to see what comes out of this. Uh, there's so, like I said, it's the, fi- the fire of it is starting to slowly grow and it's one that that one's got to be coming up here within the next month plus i think i don't know if we're going to see like i don't think in november you'll see two hub announcements mm-hmm. i think this one i think still has some kinks to work out if it is the sure, case sure sure you know and if philadelphia is the case there's a little more groundwork i think that's at play i mean you heard about memphis alone took six months yeah. to get that whole deal done i'm assuming i mean detroit's been over those initial discussions started back in, it was like early 2021, mm-hmm. like well before the first season oh, kicked yeah. off in April. So that has clearly been a while. They want to do that one right, if that is the case. For sure. If this is the case. Again, speculative is the case. I want to put that out there <laughs> and make sure you guys are aware. The league didn't say anything. This is what the news is reporting from Detroit. Keep that in mind. Hopefully one of these days, hopefully one of these days soon, we'll be able to talk about it on the show in an official capacity. So, you know, always stay. This is why you need to be checking out the show. Even if there isn't big news, we get to speculate on some of these things. And, hey, it's usually a 50-50, sometimes more than 50-50. I feel like we Uh talked about the three hubs being a scenario. People laughed at me back then. Now it's coming close to where it might be a reality. Yeah, the cities were all wrong. Well, other than Birmingham that I talked about, yeah, but yeah. you know what? We might have a third hub. It might be three hubs, it might be four following, you know, we, we heard last year, let one hub up to two to four this year. Well, if they hit three, they're on track. If they hit four, then they did what they, they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Then we get to see season three and see where the expansion relocations, renamings, whatever. I don't know. All things are on the table. It feels like, and that uh, it feels fun. Feel fun to keep every, uh, keep track of every option. Every option's present. And again, as the league's told us, everything's, as you've said, you basically said what they said to us. Everything's on yep, the table. Yep, yep, That is That is how they are approaching this. The best possible scenario to get a second year and to show that they are going to be here for to stay moving forward is how they look at it. Uh, as, we wrap, as we wrap things up today, look, um, we talked about, you know, the two leagues that are going at each other, the USFL, the XFL. They, they, they are opponents. They won't acknowledge each other, but they are opponents. Um, and they will do their own things as they please or not please. And the XFL, we, as we know, has their draft coming up. Um, well, take to, it already it took been, place quite honestly. Well, it has already taken yeah, yeah. place. Yes. I will keep that in mind. Uh, second day will be coming up shortly. First day though, um, as we are finishing up has already kind of, you know, said its own stuff and boy, it was quite a first day. If you are a USFL fan, because it's been rumored for a while, uh, by many news sources out put out there, um, that people will be jumping ship. Uh, some of loophole, some, it sounds like there's different complications with how the contracts are at this point. I throw my hands up at the contract talk because anyone who thinks that they have something on it, sands the NFL loophole. Mm-hmm. It's completely to the wind because I don't know what to say anymore. I originally, we thought if you were post post that may update, you'd be locked in. But there's even now guys getting drafted that were post right, that right. may update and are going to the XFL. So who knows? But nonetheless, there are some big names going to the XFL from the USFL. Um, a few that were eyebrow raisers that stuck out immediately were in the QB assignments as Kyle Sloter and Luis Perez are initially already announced to be going to teams. Uh, Sloter is going to be heading over to the Renegades, uh, coached by Bob Stoops. Luis Perez will be heading to the Vegas Vibers, who are being coached by rod woodson and that might might not even be the end of the qbs and there's plenty of other players that have already been drafted in this first round or at least this first day that are bigger name talents or at least ones that are 
you know, ones you remember and a few all USFL guys too. So, I mean, it, there's people moving. Well, you know you what know? this tells me? The XFL, they're very jelly. They look at the, at the USFL. They said, we need those guys on our teams. And you mm. know what? They found some of the guys with the loopholes. Am I concerned? No, I, I, I mean, we talked about this, I think, in the past. I think it's expected that we're going to see some of these guys move on. And the same thing, I think we're going to see XFL guys move into the USFL, whether the XFL, you know, plays another season next year or doesn't. I mean, we'll find out. The USFL, the one thing we do know, first spring league in over 40 years to play a season two. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the big news. Now, again, losing some people, I think that's expected. Did they lose a lot? No, I don't think so. I Actually, I think it was actually quite tempered. There was some of the, you know, the quarterbacks were looking at two. Luis Perez, bigger name, but in all reality, he was kind of a backup with the Generals last year for the most part, other than when DeAndre Johnson got injured and then Perez came in. But yeah, still kind of a big hit. I think the surprising one is Kyle Slaughter, or as the XFL did their due diligence, called him Kyle Slaughter. Um, Mm -hmm. Kyle Slaughter. Now, here's what's interesting. Good friend of the show, Ducky. I don't know if you saw in the Discord, he's circulating some DMs that he had with Mr. Sloter, and he asked him if he was moving on to the XFL, and he actually said he wasn't sure. Which leads me to question, what is the situation? Are you bound by a contract when you get drafted? Because he was also not at the draft, at the quarterback selection. Correct. Perez Correct. was. Look nervous. Probably, look, probably need to go play a game of bowling or something. Kyle Sloter, <laughs> nowhere to be seen. Tells Ducky, good friend of the show, community legend, if you will, he's not sure. Probably maybe going to the XFL, but he's not sure. So I don't know what this really means because we saw this back in the 80s with the original USFL, with the NFL. Both leagues are drafting the same guys. Some went to the NFL, some went to the USFL. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we'll see some of these guys jump back to the USFL. Maybe we'll see them back next year. I don't think it's the end of it, though. I think maybe we see some down the road as well, because I think not all contracts are created equal, but as like, I'm a fan of both leagues. You know, I'm saying a lot of this in tongue in cheek, let's be honest. But if, you know, I know there are diehard USFL fans that only watch the USFL. And I know there's the same on the XFL side. I enjoy it all. But if you are one of those guys, you're a USFL fan and you're worried. I wouldn't be. Here's the reason why I wouldn't be hub football partnership. I think that that does is help. huge for your pipeline of players because let's not forget who came from Hub Football last year, USFL champion quarterback Jamar Smith. Among, mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of the top guys that were in the league last year were part of that Hub Football program, and so yeah, you're going to lose a couple guys. But you know what didn't happen, Zach? They didn't lose all their quarterbacks. They lost a couple, one backup, one starter. Kyle Sloter, still not even sure that he's going to go where he's going to land. So I wouldn't be too concerned. But the good, the thing that keeps me breathing easy is one, we've already seen the USFL just, they've been making picks all throughout the summer, right? We're over a hundred guys that have been picked up in the off season, over a hundred. And that's not even counting the draft. That's going to be, I would assume a lot of these guys that end up either getting released from their contracts from the, you know, when they do the roster cuts or guys in the hub football program. And you know what? There's going to be some other uh, other folks kind of driving in too. Probably some guys coming straight out of, uh, you know, early college, maybe before NFL requirements. Yep. I think there, I can't remember who, but I feel like I've heard a couple guys say, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll have to see. Uh, but I wouldn't be too concerned. I mean, each league, there's plenty of guys. Let's not forget. There are so many quality football players out there that we could probably create a third league. Let's just no, no joke. I mean, there was almost a third league and then, you know, <laughs> silly de- poor decision making was made that I will too put much out patience. There. Is you that know? what we're talking about here? Too much patience, yeah, not o- enough over, strength, over patient, <laughs> too slow on the draw. We're talking about MLFB, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. You know. Okay. Thing. All right. I, yeah. I just, Cause I mean, that was supposed to take off back in August and you know, that happened and apparently they're still existing and trying to do their thing. So who knows, but I digress. Yes. There's plenty of talent. I mean, th- 
look, think about just the amount of draft talent that was avail- that's available in the XFL right now and the USFL's own draft pools. Thousands of players per that they have put into these pools from multiple different avenues to go in. And I do, I mean, I believe that they can restock. You know, I, I, I do think that's the case. My thing that's, this is what stinks mm-hmm. is, you know, I very much see some of these guys that are going over to the XFL as ones that I thought could be like fan corner shirts. Sure. Um, at least for a few years, you know, I know Luis Perez, he has been through the ringer. Um, I wasn't fully surprised by that move to be honest with you. He was with the XFL last, exactly. Year. Uh, Kyle Sloter, I, I am not fully either, but I was kind of hoping, you know, maybe with them retaining and having like say John D Filippo coming in as a, you know, a QB guru mm-hmm. coach. Well, and he has a working relationship with coach flip you know, too. That's why I thought it was kind of a perfect thing because let's not forget when Sloter was up with the Vikings in Minnesota. So is Coach Flip, right? So I mm-hmm. was like, oh, you know what? This is a perfect match. Maybe it won't work out that way. But you know what? You know, on the on the other on the flip side of things, <laughs> no pun intended, it does give Coach Flip an option, like the opportunity to really build his team here too. So it is what it is. I'm not too overly concerned with guys moving between and back and forth. And I'm going to say something bold here, Zach. I think we're going to see some of these guys that are in the XFL draft right now end up playing in the USFL in 2023 in this upcoming season for various reasons, just all sorts of different ways that I think it could happen. We'll have to see. I mean, there's tons of, I mean, mean, there's tons (laughs) of talent that won't get drafted just from the, in the XFL alone. And yeah, they're still having a, they're going to have a supplemental draft coming up that supposedly is at the turn of next Mm -hmm. year. Um, or at least it'll be, they'll try and get it before the next season starts as they'll have one more set. But uh, keep in mind, like you said, thousands of players um, between that and the fact that you're going to have XFL cut downs, they're going to happen. Mm-hmm. You they're They already are signing on much like how the, X, the USFL is going to do it. They're going to sign on guys. They're going to cut down these rosters. Those players disperse. You don't think they aren't going to be available for the league to go for the USFL to go take a look at mm-hmm. as well. And some people might say, well, those are extra scraps. Like I say that that is available, that is available talent you can resource. Um, I do believe that the XFL though, they, they are picking up some good, some good guys. We will, I will, we'll acknowledge oh, that, yeah, you yeah. know, like you get guys like Don, Devante Bosby, you get guy, you get guys like, you know, like a Cameron hunt, you know, Sal solid, Canella. solid one there. Yeah, Doug Costin as well. I mean, there's there's a few others out there too. Uh, Darius Shepard, Rashad Davis. Um, I mean, there's, there's good talents. They're going over there, you know. Um, but this is this is a war for talent and a war between two leagues. This is part of the whole process. Um, and one thing that I'll acknowledge again, we we know this. The XFL we know is going to be paying more for these players. Um, the USFL is, as we know. And I'm being fair for everyone that's talking about that angle. Remember, players unionize. They are making a CBA. Um, it's going to be a, still a little bit longer. I don't think it'll be ready by 2023. Sure. But processes are being made in the right direction. You know, this is a ga- this is a chess match. Either way, you are going to see wins and losses across the mm-hmm. board. You know that you'll see haymakers thrown as I, I made it. I mean, I made a tweet about this anyway, both these leagues threw punches in the last few days. This is how it's going to be. And I know some people were making comments on the USL saying, oh, the USL undercut the uh, XFL's uh, QB alignment or the Mm -hmm. XFL's doing this with the, they're taking players in the USL. This is business. Yeah. I mean, what do you (laughs) expect? This is, this is competition. You should want as much as I know, like maybe you're a fan of one or the other competition breeds success as well as a better quality product. You should want this. Yeah. Um, this is to me, the, this is to me what is best right now. I know like, some people worry about, you know, cannibalizing each other can lead to the death of spring football again, if you think, but I think it leads to one of these guys winning out no matter what, which is a win for everybody. For sure. For sure. And the, and the end of the day. And, and I'll um, tell you the thing with the USFL, yeah. right They're Yeah. They're going in a little bit more frugal, a little bit more lean and mean compared to the XFL. Who's really, I, I've said this before. It feels like just a whole hail Mary of, we're going to put a lot of money into this on the front end, 
But I'll tell you this, Zach, I had some conversations with some folks and dude, from, you know, from the outside looking in, the XFL looks like a whole, they're a big league with, look at the, we talked about the coaching staffs before with Arlington. They got like 8 million coaches mm-hmm. over there. Two, two offensive coordinators, two defensive coordinators. When, when, yeah. When you, when you have, <laughs> when you have dual coordinators for both sides of the ball, you you're, you're putting a pretty penny down. And especially since I know there's at least two head coaching candidates that are on that rock yeah. on that coaching staff that I, one of them went from the gamblers. Mm-hmm. Remember Tim Lewis. So, well, I'll tell you this <laughs> though. Mean, it is a little bit of smoke and mirrors though, because I had some conversations when you look at the, from the inside looking out of the XFL, I mean, it is pretty lean and mean. I mean, St. Louis, right? Zach, how many, how many ticket sales uh, people do you think they have in St. Louis? Biggest market probably they have. Well, I know some people have said that they have like, I think 17,000 deposits or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. How many people do you think they have fielding those ticket sales for the XFL in St. Louis? Uh, good question. I have no idea. One, one, Zach, one. What are they doing? Are they out of their mind? And so I look at that. It's like, this is, you know, I like both leagues, but if I'm looking at one that's going to, I mean, has the better chance to survive Fox, they're not talking about year two. They're going to year two. They're thinking about year 10. Mm. We're talking like decades in. They're ready to go. XFL, they need, and this is nothing against them, but this is the reality of the situation. They need ESPN and Disney to buy them. That's it. If they don't, they're done. Call me crazy. But that's, I think, is the true reality. Or or they're going to have to go into year two and dial back all of that spending. And I think that looks worse when, okay, well, now we're relocating our teams. Maybe they move them into a hub. Wouldn't that be worse is instead of going from a hub to more cities, you go from cities to a hub because you can't afford. So that's where I, 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 you know, I, I'm hesitantly cautious with the XFL. I love the XFL. I mean, that's how I got started in this whole schmoz, but Mm -hmm. I look at it. I'm like, that is a lot of money and you better hope it works. You're not getting money on TV. Well, You're not getting money on ticket sales. You're, make, you're a t-shirt company. I know one thing that was being, that still is, I'm, I'm actually still surprised this is being talked about at this point is I, I don't understand how Vegas still hasn't gotten a stadium. Well, so I um, have a little bit of inside baseball on that. If, if you don't mind. Uh, I mean, if you want to share, please bring it to the I mean, class, they're already I'm, mad at me. So why not? Um, so it sounds like they're, so, you know, there's a no compete at Boyd. Right. They're trying to work around that. They're trying to work with the, the I, I can't, I don't know the ins and outs of who has the contract with it. If it's, if it's the Raiders or they're using it for a practice, I don't know what the situation is, but they're work. They're trying to so, work through see, my, that. My understanding with that is the Raiders made a deal with UNLV when they built Allegiant mm-hmm. that you can't use Sam Boyd. Like it can't be used for any football purpose after Allegiant was built because UNLV is basically playing in a legion. Right, right, right. So that's the stipulation is yeah, that stadium's there, but they wrote a contract saying this cannot be used for that purpose starting well, a few years right, ago. Right, so right. that I mean if if they can get it to work out, that's a win. I mean, it, it just is amazing to me. That's that's the part that kills me is that it's been for that case, it's been so long already that you have a team sitting there you At know. this point, you know, well, normally I would say they're just going to play in Arlington, but then they went and had a fan engagement event in Vegas. So that kind of leads me to believe, well, maybe they are going to play in Vegas. We know that they, we heard that they were talking to Cashman Field, the high school stadium. Everybody, you know, I mean, the XFL fanboy said, no, they aren't, blah, blah, blah. They were, sorry. I hate to tell you. I, I, I've talked to people within the league. They fucking told me they did. So cry away. Um, but. I don't think they'll end up playing there because of the reaction. And I mean, it's a high school stadium. I mean, it is, it's not like here in Texas where some of the high school stadiums are like college stadiums. Correct. It's like a little rinky dink high school stadium with seats on one side of the, one side of the field, which I mean, for TV, you can make it work. I think, I mean, the, the USFL made it work with nobody in the stadium. And so, I mean, it, it's possible. It's, I mean, at, at minimum shouldn't have a problem selling it out. If you do, then maybe you want to move the, that Vegas team, I don't know, back to L.A. or something where it seemed like they were thinking about going. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see how it all plays out. I just want to watch spring football. That's all I want. Well, without a doubt. I, again, it, what a time! it's mainly you still can say what a time to be alive as a football fan 
if you're just following any of these any of these leagues outdoors, if you're following the arena scene, for me, I can I could give you I could talk all day about arena right now and where and how it's on the to me on the rise in that mm-hmm. regard. But yeah, I I mean I love it. You know, I again I, I love the competition. I love seeing the cat and mouse game, the chess pieces moving around. You know, and I I think that everyone has their own take on this. And until we see what the I think the next I think really three years down the road is when we will truly understand where all this is going to be ending up at. I, I think that is my, the five years I think we'll, it will see, or at the very least come 2024 will be the next step on. All right, where's this whole process going? Cause then you'll see like, are we getting funds? Mm-hmm. You know, the USFL, where's the, t- where's the uh, in market situation, you know, you XFL two point or 3.0's second year. How does that look? Are they getting the second year, which is again, its own challenge in its own mm-hmm. right, because you have to prove fans. This one's going to be around for a second year. So they have to get to that, which I think there's a high possibility. They will. I'm going to put that there mm-hmm. for you people, but that still is a thing that's going to be all right. Get that monkey off your back and then move on from there too. Um, I want to, and actually, this is a great thing in terms of this argument. I want to bring up that I saw while we were discussing, um, Bruno Reagan actually, uh, who has been, you know, he's, he's back. He's going to be actually on the AMA on discord for the showboats, mm-hmm. uh, or he already, he was doing that. And he had a good quote, I think on the strategies of these leagues right now. Um, and this is just based on the draft mm-hmm. today. So here's his thoughts on it. You can take it as you will. Um, his tweet here, quote, XFL seems to be going for older vets and USFL sticking to young talent, uh, parenthesis, and me for some reason, <laughs> parenthesis, uh, enough in town to go around more football jobs to jobs, the better. I mean, it's what we've been talking like you get more opportunities are great. You know, there's some people I've seen that they, they want one of these leagues to die. And I, I think that's silly. That's what that, those quotes, those quotes kill me because I'm saying, we want, I mean, you want players, I mean, you want players to have opportunities. Why, why are you wanting, why you want a league to be killed off and then say, just join the other right. one. Yeah, no, I mean, I wouldn't No, I like this. I like seeing other people getting a second chance and having another shot to go and live their dreams. Mm-hmm. You know, I would never wish ill will like, yeah, we do a USFL show, but I'm, we ain't going to tell you to kill off the XFL. No. Are you crazy? Well, like I said, are you, are you insane? Well, that people get, <laughs> you know, I get all sorts of DMS online people, you know, clearly they call me a US, USFL Homer, but I, I mean, I run you XFL newsroom too. That was, that's where I started mm-hmm. and I do run all that right. stuff. If I had more time and if the league, you know, didn't come after all the XFL podcast, maybe we'd do one. Maybe we'd do one if the XFL didn't go and say, Hey, yo, how dare you use our name? But that ain't going to make me hate them. You know what I mean? I'm just going to watch, you know what? Instead of, instead of spending my time to promote their product, I'll just enjoy the product. Uh, sometimes, you know, when it becomes work, it, it's, Ooh, it's a little bit of a gauntlet of like doing the show, doing the writing and watching the game. So it, it allows me to just kind of do some writing and watch the game. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Plus we have, the Roughnecks are back in town, so I get to go actually go see some games in person, probably go up to the press booth there. But yeah, the wanting one of the leagues to die thing is the silliest thing ever because, I mean, let's say let's say the XFL goes away. Some of those mm-hmm. people might stop watching spring football altogether, whereas they Correct. may watch the USFL and the XFL, right? Uh, if they both survive. And so I don't know, I, I want I would like to see them stick around for at least three years, both of them. And if they both stick around beyond that, sign them up and may the best man win. Right. Uh, you know, Pretty as much. long as there's still something at the end of this whole journey and it doesn't just become, Oh, well here, we're back to no spring football for the next decade. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident one of these, one of these companies will do it. I'm at least confident that Fox has the right game plan that they can make this survive. Yeah, it's a little crummy. Some, you know, not all the te- not all the teams are in their cities. But we're here at season two. We're looking at season three. They're talking about season ten. Mm-hmm. You can't be mad at that, right? It, you cannot be mad at that. Patience is strength, all. baby. Frank Murtha said patience it best. Patience is strength. <laughs> the best way to use it is yeah. here. I mean, don't. <laughs> sorry, MLFB fanboys, if you still exist, but. Good luck. That's all I can tell you. That that's one. Uh, that's one where I'm like, look, it, I I am I'm definitely more. That's the only one that I could even be like, eh, maybe it's best. That and the and the UFL. 
Joe McClendon, yeah. if you're out there, why? What are you doing, man? Promising stadiums and cities? You're gonna build Again? stadiums? Excuse yeah. me. Who are these people falling for this stuff in Oklahoma City and in St. Louis? I'm sorry. It's a damn shame. Come on, learn. <laughs> Read the, read the online articles. Do some research. This guy's <laughs> doing scams. I'm sorry. Look up Joe McClendon. He's not a good man. Um, <laughs> allegedly. So hold on. Wait, hold on. Lawyers. Allegedly not a good man. He allegedly did these things. I've been through the ringer. Before. Hey, here's the thing, Zach. You sure, know what sure. I mean? Yeah, I'm just saying you got to hit those boxes because that's all I'll say. <laughs> all right. All, I'll, all say. right. I'll go with the I'll, I'll, I'll put out allegedly. I'm just telling you. There's videos out there. Buyer you can beware. Look up articles and this stuff. There's plenty of research you can do. Trust me. Make your own opinion, I guess, but I think it's pretty easy to do. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, by the way, we'll later this week drop a interview with tight end D, uh, Datrian Evans, who is joining the Pittsburgh Maulers. I uh, was really hoping I could get it out last episode. Of course, I was uh, not able to join uh, Stefan last time uh, i was out and up showing up in chicago for something so i uh, i was away from the mic but we'll drop that interview post this episode by the way uh and as we wrap up here guys thanks for tuning in um it, I, what a week for oh, yeah. I, you know the usfl for if you're if you're a spring football fan you, you know you just you got to be happy i mean all this good news surrounding just the you know just the drafts the draft stuff the the memphis showboats returning and having a hub Tom Dundon getting a lawsuit <laughs> thrown this way by AAF trustees. It's it's all gold. It's 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 the perfect storm. November fifteenth, twenty twenty two will live in will live as a as it's spring football in day now. Fashion. Yes, it will. It will. It had the trifecta. It was a good it day. It was a good day from it. beginning to end. Pet chock full of news. I loved it, and I hopefully we'll have more days like that here in the near future. I mean, that's kind of the fun of having two of these things around at the same time. Yeah. No. Well, you know. You know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, thank you for tuning in again. Follow us on at follow us at USFL Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to us if you like the show. You know. Click the bell, builds morale, hit that big red button. Um, and look, if you're say you tune say you're turning in late or you're like say you're tuning in late, for example, to this uh for the preview or something, you know, uh we'll be getting better. We're getting some more clips out. Uh, that is something I am promising this year. That is my responsibility, my task. I will be getting clips out to you people. Uh if you if you can't catch the whole thing, I will give you but more bite-sized chunks. So We'll be getting those out to you as well. Um, and remember, check out Royal Retros too. Use USFL co- podcast as a code for ten percent off checkout for your purchase. And when you subscribe to our channel, still entering you that jersey raffle as well. Five thousand subs will give you a personal jersey. I think that about does it. I think that does. I it. think so. What a gauntlet of a show for a gauntlet of a <laughs> week. Uh, Next week's Thanksgiving. I don't know. I'll be traveling, so maybe we'll do a show. Maybe we won't. If there's big news, we'll find a way to do it. If not, yeah, happy I'll, Thanksgiving, everyone. You know. Yeah, really. I'll, I'll be per, I'll be same boat as you. Um, I'm actually going to Louisville. Oh, okay. Uh, with family, so um, not just it's more for vacation. Actually, I'm not from Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, but family's meeting up there. Uh, the the folk, the actually the aunt and uncle from Detroit are going out there. So we'll get to talk about the Panthers. Probably. Very nice. Uh, but um, yeah, I will definitely be like you. I'm probably going to bring something to record if something oh, breaks, yeah. but otherwise, I mean, yeah. Um, happy Thanksgiving. If we don't talk to you next week, everybody. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a good day to be a, a fan of the USFL right now. Oh, yeah. Celebrate. Good to meet. Good to have people from Memphis, Tennessee. If you're joining into us for this show and others in the future, can't wait to talk to you guys and to meet some of you people. Hopefully, for us, hopefully meet you guys in person if we can, uh, as well. So, yeah. Um, Till next time, everybody. Catch you on the flip. Stick to this channel. Stick to your podcast platform, and we'll see you soon for another one with some more exciting news as we lead in to 2023 and season two of the USFL.